Today in this 2014 Ford Explorer, we're going to be test fitting the 23 by 60 Stromberg Carlson cargo carrier, part number CC-100. Now the weight capacity of this cargo carrier is 500 pounds. It has this nice mesh flooring here, which is going to make it a lot easier to clean in the long run. And then around the borders of the cargo carrier, we have tie-down points for your ratchet straps or your bungee cords, where you decide to use to secure your gear. Next, I'm going to go ahead and give you some measurements. The first is going to be how much distance is added to the vehicle once the cargo carrier is installed. I'm going to go ahead and measure from the bumper since that's the furthest point sticking out from the vehicle. And that's going to add about 27 inches. Next, I'll go ahead and give you the ground clearance. That's going to be about 12 and a half inches at this point here. And finally, the closest point to the bumper, which is actually going to be about four inches. Now with this vehicle, we're going to have dual exhaust. That's going to be one on each side. The measurement for that is going to be about eight and a half, nine inches. So just keep that in mind when you have heat sensitive material to try to keep it to the center and not to either side. Now, of course, once we have nothing installed on this, we have full access to the rear hatch of our vehicle with no problems and being able to get whatever it is we need. However, I'm going to go ahead and give you a breakover point measurement which is going to be the point where the hatch would come in contact with whatever you have installed on your cargo carrier. <clears throat> and that's going to be about, about 19 inches. So just keep that in mind when you're loading your gear. Now this particular cargo carrier does not come with a hitch pin or clip, but you can find them on eTrailer.com. Today we're using part number PC3. And there you have it for the Stromberg Carlson Cargo Carrier, part number CC-100 on our 2014 Ford Explorer. Here it is on our test course. We'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side-to-side -side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Next, we're at the alternating speed bumps, which will see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Finally, we have the full speed bumps, where we'll see the up and down action, which is just like driving out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway. 